An important tool in financial management is the ability to measure whether or not you are meeting your financial goals by setting up a budget and measuring where your actual information is in comparison to that budget. Centerpoint has a budgeting tool which will allow you to import your budget. This video will teach you how to create a new budget. There are several different versions of Centerpoint Accounting. There is a Centerpoint Accounting for Business, there's a Centerpoint Fund Accounting product, and a Centerpoint for Agriculture product. I am in the Centerpoint for Business product, but I will guide you through the differences for your product. But most of the steps are completely the same, uh, no matter which product that you're in. I'm going to go ahead and start a new budget. There's two ways to get into the budget option. The first one is by going to reporting tools, and then there's an option there for budgets. The second is by going to setup, and then there's an option there for budgets. Both places will get you to the same location. Okay, when um, the budget comes up, what is going to happen is you're going to be presented with a list of currently created budgets, if you have any budgets out there already. And then you'll have some buttons down at the bottom. You can either delete a budget, create a new budget, which is what we're going to do, click highlight a budget and click OK to open it or cancel out of this screen. And we're going to actually create a new budget by clicking on the new button. After you click on the new button, what's going to happen is, is it's going to bring up a budget properties screen, which allows us to define the parameters of this budget. And the first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and give the budget a name. Now I'm going to name mine 2021 Alpine Sports Budget, uh, but you are not limited to just putting in a single year into a budget. So I could have just called my budget Alpine Sports. And each year you could keep extending the date ranges out so you don't have to actually create a new budget. However, more years that you get into a budget, it might actually slow down the file a little bit. So my preference is to actually start um, a separate year for this budget, but that isn't always the case for everybody. Down below that is a field where you can choose the company that you're going to be doing this budget for. If you happen to have more than one company, then you can only go ahead and do a budget for one company at a time. Later on in reports, we can pull budgets from multiple companies together. But right now we can just enter a budget for one company. For those of you using the fund accounting product, this field that says company will be labeled fund, and you could only put in a budget for one fund at a time. After that, we're gonna choose a date range for our budget. So this is the date range that I happen to need. It'll be 1121 um, through 123121. But you could either type in dates by, by highlighting the field there and going ahead and typing in the dates, or by clicking on the icon at the end of that field, which would allow you to choose the dates from uh, the uh, drop or from the calendar that comes up. Okay, so we're gonna put in our from and to date. Now, the way that the Centerpoint budgeting works is, is that it's going to give you three reports in this budget. It's going to give you a flow of funds report, which is going to have all of your accounts listed on it so that you can budget for transaction activity to any account, whether it be a income statement account or whether it be a balance sheet account. It's going to have a balance sheet uh, uh, for you to have a budgeted balance sheet and an income statement for a budgeted income statement. So because it's going to have a budgeted balance sheet on it, it needs to begin that budget with some beginning values. So I'm going to go ahead and pick December of 2020 as the beginning values that I want that budget to start out with. It is likely, though, that you aren't doing your budget um, in December prior to the budget. It's probably going to happen maybe a month or two even before that. So it might be September or October, maybe even November that you're putting the budget information in and your December period might not be open yet. Now I'm just working on a calendar year. Obviously, if you have a fiscal year that is different than a calendar year, 
um, when I say December, we're really talking the end of the fiscal period. Okay, so um, the, even if I don't have December open yet, if I've not put data in there, I'm still gonna choose the December period. And then as actual information is input into the system, it will update those balances with that information. So I'm gonna choose December as my beginning period. Then when they draw up this budget, it'll have just a list of all of your accounts on the flow of funds. Like I said, you can do budgeting for income statement accounts as well as balance sheet accounts. And it's just going to have the account names um, unless you say that you wanna include the account number. So I'm gonna to say to include my account number and then it lets you sort the accounts by either account number or account name. Now, even if you choose account name, it's still going to sort it by what type of account it is. So it'll sort it by whether it's an asset, a liability, an equity account, whether it's a revenue and a cost of goods, expense, other revenue, other expense. Okay, so it'll separate them out by their account type and then within that account type, it'll separate them out by their account category. So whether it is a cash account or an accounts receivable account or a um, inventory account of some sort. So those will be grouped together by their account category. So it's the sort order is after that. So after the account category, do I want it sorted by account name or account number? Okay, I'm gonna choose to sort mine by account number. Then below that is a little checkbox, which will allow you to set this budget as a default. All that's gonna do for you is we can, you once this budget is input, we can actually use this budget in our regular income statements on our regular reports menu to do an actual to budget comparison. And if you don't select which budget you wanna do that comparison with, it's going to use whichever one is your default budget. So if I mark this as the default budget, then it's going to do that comparison with that, this budget, unless I select a different budget. Okay, as soon as I mark this one as the default budget, if there was another one marked as the default budget, it will unselect that one and now make this one be the default budget. Okay, before I hit the okay to create this budget, there's a section down here at the bottom where we could actually import information from other budgets. So one of the practices that a lot of our customers um, do is that it, if they are trying to set up different budgets by either different departments or profit centers, for those of you using the um, fund accounting product, it would be departments. For those of you using the center point accounting product, it would be profit centers. So they might set up separate budgets for each profit center or department, or they may even set up a separate budget for each location where they're tracking their revenue and expense by. They, if they have done that and they wanna then create a whole entity budget where they pull all of that information together, they could click on the add button here and they would get a list of other created budgets. And if they wanted to include that information that they've already input into one of these department or profit center budgets into this budget, they can select that budget and they can add as many of those budgets as they want into this budget and then it'll just combine the information and still allow you to add additional information into this budget. So I can pull all of those separate profit center budgets into this one. Okay, and now once again, before I, if I decide I wanted to remove any of those two, by the way, I could highlight one of them and just click the remove button down here at the bottom. It would allow me to remove it from there. So once I've added it, I could actually remove it from the budget as well. Okay, and once again, before I hit the okay button to create this budget, I'm gonna take you over to the, the second tab here. There's a second tab up at the top here called the entry mode tab. And the entry mode tab allows you to determine how the budget input is going to happen. 
Now we've got a video that's going to go into a little bit more detail on these entry modes, but I'm going to give you a brief description of these entry modes. Okay, I'm going to start really, even though it's the top mode is the um, use account entry mode, I'm going to start with the second one, which is the journal entry offset to, uh, to cash. When you go ahead and use this mode, every budget figure that you put into the budget will automatically be offset to cash. So if you put in a increase of a utility expense, for example, for $100, it'll automatically decrease the cash account by $100. That's going to then reflect on your budgeted balance sheet and decrease cash on that budgeted balance sheet. That is what journal entry offset to cash does. The second option is called an open entry budget. With an open entry budget, an entry to an account does not offset automatically to another account. So that same $100 to a utilities expense would not decrease my um, cash account. So with this kind of budgeting, it is up to you to make sure that you put in balanced transactions if you want to have a budgeted balance sheet. Otherwise, this mode of entry is typically used for customers who are more concerned about putting in a budgeted income statement than they are about putting in a budgeted balance sheet. So um, open entry will not have any offset effect. So any, any amount that you put on an account in the budget will just be for that account and won't offset anywhere else. Okay, the last mode of entry is used for um, transactions that involve more than one account. Let's say that your sale was selling some sort of an inventory. Not only would we need to increase the revenue account and increase your cash, but we would also need to decrease the inventory account and offset that with whatever cost of goods account um, that would be offset to. So there's more than one account or more than two accounts involved in that transaction. So for some transactions, you might want to use detailed transaction entry. Okay, that is why we have a fourth mode, this one up at the top called use account entry mode. Use account entry mode will mostly go ahead and set most accounts to do journal entry offset to cash as the default, but it allows you on a particular line to designate that you want to use a detailed transaction entry for that particular line. Okay, so it allows you to change modes as you're going ahead and going through the budget. So the default entry mode that gets selected is the one called use account entry mode. Now, we, if you select either account entry mode, journal entry offset to cash or detailed transaction entry, you're going to have to select which bank account those are going to be offset to. Okay, so I've chosen that these transactions are going to offset my checking account. Okay, if you choose journal, uh, if you choose open entry, then there is no bank account. It gets grayed out, so um, there is no bank account to select because, like I said, it's not offsetting anything else. Okay, these entry defaults for management information are discussed in a different video. They, if you set a default here, like if I go ahead and set a profit center to biking equipment and service then every bed, while that property is set, every budget entry that I put in will automatically get allocated to that profit center. Once again, for those of you using the fund accounting product, profit center will actually be labeled department. Okay, so they're really the same thing. Okay, so we'll discuss that in a different um, video. Other than that, I'm ready to go ahead and click OK and create my budget. So once you click OK, it's going to go ahead and start drawing up that budget. Now you'll see here when the budget gets drawn up, you're going to have 
three tabs. You're going to have a flow of funds tab at the bottom, a balance sheet tab, and then an income statement tab. All of your budgeting figures will be entered in on your flow of funds tab. You will also see here that I already have some figures in my budget, and that's because I imported those other budgets in here. If you didn't import any other budgets in, all of your figures would be zero there. So you would have zeros and everything. But this flow of funds tab has all of your revenue accounts. If I collapse them, I have all of my cost of goods accounts. My expense accounts, I'm going to collapse that. I have my other expense accounts, and if I had had other revenue, I would have had other revenue accounts there too. After that, it goes on to all your balance sheet accounts. So I have assets, I have liability accounts, and I have equity accounts here. So it does allow you to do budgeting for each and every account. To save this budget, I could just simply close the budget and it will do an automatic save. So I can either go to File, and then exit to exit out, or I could just close it and stay in the budgeting tool. So closing it will close out this budget, but it'll stay in the budgeting tool. If I choose exit, it'll exit the budgeting altogether. Or I could go ahead and exit budgeting with the X in the top right of the screen there. But the system does do an automatic save, so there is no need to hit a save button to save any of the figures in that budget.